I would like to welcome everybody on behalf of the Rabbonim, the Hanhala of Yeshivasi and Halacha, to our annual Smicha Convocation and Award event. And I wanted to take and discuss actually what is Halacha? We come out, we come out of Parshas Chukas, and this weekend we've had. Lechem chuki, we've had plenty of food. Um, but we talk about halacha. And what, it, what is halacha? And basically, bekitzer, halacha means dynamism. It means movement. Lech lecha, it means go somewhere. It means don't stand still. You know, mm-hmm. Rav Ostrov on Shabbos happened to mention the Noam Elimelech, and who's near and dear to my heart. And... He says, kol hashona halichosav. What does it mean, kol hashona halichosav? Is that every day you have to be different in how you go. There was a, a famous Admor named the Yid HaKodesh, a Pshischa. And he said, why, why, do you, why do they call you the Yid? He says, you know, I thought of my Avodah Hashem of yesterday, and I realized that yesterday I was a golem, and today I'm a Yid. And the next day he said, you know, I looked back on yesterday, and yesterday I was a golem, and today I'm a Yid. And that's what it means. It's a forward dynamism. It's not kol ha-shona halachos. That's important. You've got to teach halacha. You've got to learn halacha. But it's shona halichosav. You've got to change how you move, how you roll. Otherwise, it, it's a bracha levatola. Now, I want to disabuse certain people from a certain notion. This is not a graduation today. So if you think that you're graduating, you're not. Think of this more as opening day at Fenway Park. This is... This is the beginning. And as the people, I'm sure you've heard, as the people in Isser Vaheter say, you got to keep it fresh. And how do they say that in Iser Vaheter language? If it's not Ben Yomo, it's no St. Tom Lefgam. If you don't keep your learning current and fresh, then you're just not doing it right. Now, by the way, guys, I know you worked hard to get here. I worked hard to get there. I still work at it. But I got to tell you something. It's not about us. You know, we, we enjoy learning. You know, we say in the morning in the davening, Varev no Hashem lokeinu is divrei zoras chabafinu. You know, it should be sweet in our mouth. I'm a maple syrup producer. I, I, I appreciate that. But why do you have to say that? The guys who sit here and learn know how geschmack it is. And my chavrusa was in Woodmere. I was in a farm in Vermont. We'd learn two, three, four hours at night. Or I'd come down to New York, I'd get a shawarma in Queens, I'd get home, I was still flashing, but it was a long drive. And we would learn on the phone, and I'd come home just energized. And so why do you have to say in the morning, Vaharevna? And the answer is, you don't. But it's Kadesh Shalom Levayesh Misha Inlo. We say it because there are some people who are not yet there, but those of us who are, we, we don't want to embarrass those who aren't there yet, but they're getting there. And many of you are getting there, many of you are there, and many of you are going even higher and higher. But guys, it's not about us. We love our learning. We love our chavrusa. Um, but we got here at a price. And I'm not talking about a financial price. For every time we sat and learned, there was a wife who was doing double duty, running the house, taking care of the kids. And there were kids who had a tiptoe around. I see, I see women smiling and I see knowing glances. That's right. And there were kids who had to tiptoe around, you know, and maybe tone down their youthful exuberance a little because Tati was learning. And it's yours as well. I have to tell you, when I got smicha the first time many years ago from Rav Ostrov, I went to Eretz Yisrael with my family. And the afternoon before the, the smicha convocation, we went, I got a, a bracha from my Rebbe, from my high school Rebbe, it was, it was fabulous. But then we went to Kever Rachel. No, I'm not talking about Kever Rachel and Chevron. I'm talking, we're up in Tveria, next to the Kever of Rebbe Meir Balhanes. We went to the Kever of Rachel, the wife of Rebbe Akiva. And what it says on the Kever, and this is a famous Gemara, it says, after 24 years, the wife put him through yeshiva and gave up everything. And I do mean everything. Her father was Rockefeller. She denounced it and she walked away because she wanted her husband to learn Torah. And after 24 years, she pushed forward. She wanted to say Shalom Aleichem to her husband. And you know, the Talmudim, the handlers, 
got in the way to push him away. And Rabbi Akiva says, no, no, no. She, she comes up here. He said, Sheli v'shelochem shelahi. He says, my Torah and your Torah, it's her Torah. So ladies, this is yours. And don't forget that. We're all partners in this. And a special moment of Hakar HaSatov, a special moment of Hakar HaSatov for Dr. Joe and Josh, but more importantly, to their wives, to Debbie and to Dina, this one is yours. And Shali v'shalachem v'shalanu shalachem, it's yours, and you own this one. And we thank you. I'd like to introduce the Rosh Yeshiva of Yeshiva Siyan Halacha, Harav Aaron Shenkaluski. We're gathered here today to serve two purposes. First of all, to honor those that are getting smicha. And secondly, to show our cause to those that made it help us make, get to this point. As I mentioned last night, to a few of you, we had a little small mob of Malka. <coughs> There's four psukim in, in Tehillim that are one of my favorite psukim in Halal. Oidcha, Kiani Sonny, Evan Mosa Abuinim, Mesa Shem Isazois, Zayyam Mosa Hashem. These four psukim, I think, apply to my life and as well as any of you who have gotten to the point of Semicha. The Pasuk says, Oidcha, Kiani Sonny, Vatihili Lishua. The Pashtas Pshach, I didn't get a chance to look in art school, but I think the simple understanding most of us, at least that I always thought was Pshat, it is true, but I think there's another Pshat. The Pashtas Pshat is that we thank Hashem for answering our tefillahs. Can he sonny, they answered us. But I believe that there's another deeper Pshat that applies to our lives and um, a, a favorite Pshat of mine. It's not my Pshat, but it's uh, one that applies to our lives. Oidcha ki anisoni is thank you for anisoni from the word oppressing, from, for oppressing us. Simply, that uh, sounds a little bit strange to thank Hashem for oppressing us. But in truth, that's what really life is all about. Well, life is about the trials and triumphs that Akkadosh Baruch Hu sends us through. And when we overcome these trials, when we overcome it, we only grow. And that's what we're here for in this world, to grow. And we thank Hashem for putting us in the positions to help us grow, even if they're difficult at the time. So going back a few years, it was definitely before I opened, it was a couple years of any son of, of not knowing direction where I'm going, of Eben Moss or Abuinim, of not, no, not of different other trials and triumphs that before I opened, I didn't know where I was going, where I should go, where I'm headed in life. But Kosh Bocha literally dra pra practically dragged me with a leash and said, this is where you're going, this is what you're doing. And I was able to open Bishyat Shemaya in four and a half years ago in Alocha, something I wouldn't have dreamed of a year before that. Then Mesa Shemaya says, in the first being they knew, shortly afterwards I was able to see what, why Kosh Bocha put, put me here. But now four and a half years later, we've reached the stage of Zah Hashem, Asa, it's a time for rejoicing after such a wonderful Shabbos together that was, I almost had to do nothing for all planned and, and from the lead, from the biggest, smaller to the smallest detail by Dr. Joe Rosenbaum and Josh Haft, our original <laughs> Mr. Hatha Komedan. <laughs> well, we start Mr. Hatha. So now is the time that Nigilim Mitzvah Chavoy, the Rabbi Yonis says in, in Brachas, Nigilim Mitzvah Chavoy means rejoicing with Hashem. Chavoy is going on Hashem. We rejoice together with Hashem, we, as Hashem Baruch showed us and helped us to get here. So it's a time of rejoicing for all of us, for myself, for the yeshiva, and for each of us so that, that are getting smicha. And all of you also have gone, I'm sure, have gone, those of you, many of you, I know your personal some of you, what you've gone through over the years. It's not easy. Um, you know, everyone has, has, has challenges. To get to smicha is, is, 
It's a three, four year program. It's, it's um, in Isani, there's definitely things we have to overcome. All sorts of personal challenges, families, jobs, work. It's definitely not easy, the learning itself, and to be able to accomplish. The Evan Marceau, I think it might be Evan Marceau, is not necessarily other people, although it could be, but probably Evan Marceau could be going on the Yitzhahara. The Evan Yitzhahara always tells us, nah, you can't do it. Nah, you'll never get it. You're not going to get it. Nah, it's too hard. You should give up. You should quit. quit. The Yitzhahara tries to, to, to master, to, to belittle us, to, to, to show us, to, to tell us that we're not able, that we're not going to get there. But we have to overcome that challenge. And, we, and those of you that are getting smicha today have overcome that challenge and overcome the many different things, that, the different trials that you've gone through over the years. So also for you, it's Mesa Hashem. Coach Boch has helped you, and it's Zashem. It's time for rejoicing for yourselves that you've gotten to this point. So we're happy to present a few, a few smichas shortly. But we have to know also that even though we've gotten to this point of smicha and we've reached another level, it's only beginning. Those of you that want to go on to the next level, you can go on to some different learning. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a, as Shmuel said, it's not a graduation. It's a starting point. It's moving up a notch, but it's not. The life is always a, an, up, an, a, um, an escalator going up. We have to make sure to go up, or otherwise we'll go down. And either you can go, some, some of you, hopefully all of you, will go on to another program, either now which, or, or at some point. But to keep, to keep what you've learned, so even if you don't want to pasca necessarily, but you know, people, that, that one person mentioned that uh, he doesn't like it to be called rabbi. I'm not so happy with that, that approach because even if you don't have to be the rub, you don't have to be the rub of the show, but you are on, you've moved on up to another level. And if you ha hear Shaila's, you don't want to pasca, that's fine. But you can, Rav Moshe Feinstein, is, they say that he used to write his phone number on the back of his smicha. So I would write the email in the back, but you all have it, I'm sure. Uh, but with the Rabbanim are still here for you. Once the Talmud, it's always the Talmud. You can always reach out to us. You get a good question. So if it's a simple question, you can answer. But if it's a, you know, something complicated you're not sure about, that's the first thing that a Rabbi has to know is one to say, I don't know. Uh, they say a story about um, Chatzpah. Um, I forget what the name um, What? What? Danny Brisk, right? That it, that it, um, Abramsky, no? Went, I think. I think it was Chatzko Abramsky, I'm not sure. Um, so when he got his smicha, he said, when he became a rob, before he became a rob, so he went to the Danny Brisk, the, exactly who it was, and he said, he said, I'm giving you one instruction. The first three shilas you asked, you say, I don't know. What? Not that story. <laughs> first three things he say, I don't know. So the first thing a rob has to know is I say, I don't know when to say, I don't know. But after that, you learn, you send us shilas, you get it, you get it, you, well, you can call it virtual shimish if you want, to, but it's you know, just, we're just long distance. And you know, I'm happy to say, this is what I think the shilas is, this is what I think the answer would be, and you can go back and forth and, and move up to a new, new level, along with going on to other programs. You know, you can't stop, it's not, a, whatever you finish, you can go on to other things. We have 10 programs over there, going on to 11th. So my bracha to you, to those of you that, that that are getting smicha, you should go Michael and Chayel. Those of you that are still in the middle of the program, you should Hashem next time, next Shabbaton, you should be the ones getting the smicha, whether it's the next one or the one after that, because they're just starting, it'll be a couple of years. But you should be able to get it to overcome the, the trials, that overcome the Yitzhahara and all the different things that, that might, tell, might say that I'm not going to get there, I'm, I won't be able to do it. But that's Nisyanis, and if we overcome the Nisyanis, we'll be here. Zechotazayim, Nagilab Nitzchoy so at this time, we'd like to call upon the, uh, those getting smicha. I spoke enough yesterday, too much yesterday. But there's someone who wasn't here who I would need, need to speak again. When I come to America now and again, I try and drive to some hick town called North Belmore or South Belmore, something Belmore. <laughs> <clears throat> and every time, it's a funny thing, I come from, we, in Israel, everything's the same kind of thing. 
And you get to a town like that, and there are a million Xmas trees and bouquets on the doors and dwarfs and elves and all these funny things all over the place. And you think, this is, it's a real thought. Bishut ma, ve'zoyche, to such beauty, it's a beautiful area, it's nice, it's green, spread out, something like this. Why? Why is Zoyche to that? And then Waze takes you to his house, and there's a room full of Sfarim, and there's a guy sitting on a couch with a pile of Sfarim on this side and a pile of Sfarim on that side, and Sfarim on the... And as we say in Italian, mi macht sich gar nicht für sich. And he's learning away and he's plowing away with such an incredibly clear mind. Each question is a question, each answer is an answer, and it's not waffled, and it's not mixed up, and it's not... And if somebody is us, then it's Arthur is us in every way. And there's no such thing as giving up, and there's no such thing as saying, well, I'm kind of done. And there's no, there's no excuse, and you're sitting in some hick town by yourself, you don't even have a, a normal chavrusa to sit with and, and, and talk about what you learn next to you. Between the Xmas trees. I don't have any words to say what it means. This is together with your dear wife Miriam and your lovely children, Beit Hashem, continue being this chus for Belmore. Because I saw yesterday when I kind of escaped a bit from this room, I went downstairs to the basement in the shul and there's a river voice Ephraim Helik base. And in Akadoma to the river of Ephraim, he quotes Reb Baruch Bel, that he heard. Reb Baruch Bel Leibovitz, Rosh Hashiv of it said, when a person works hard on the Teisvis, he protects the entire town. It's not normal. So then it clicked. Maybe that's why it's such a nice, a nice town. Because <laughs> Arthur's working hard. And he's protecting the entire town. Now they think they're doing him a favor that they allow him to live there amongst the trees. <laughs> but he's supporting them. They don't get it. That's Oilam Hazir. People don't get the right picture. So I'm taking the opportunity to wish all of you continuous satzloch in your learning and continue shining wherever you are because there are a lot of people. Baruch Hashem, that are learning more than ever before. I don't know what it was like at the Bisa Migdosh time, but for thousands of years they haven't, this, they haven't had this amount of Torah learning in the world. But to learn in depth and to learn not just sitting in a shia and letting it go in, in the ear and out the other ear, or not even in the ear, but to really work hard like you people are doing it, is not partial. It's really not partial. To put aside time. I don't do that. I don't know where you get the koach from. I don't do that. Shem irachem. But so thank you very much for all of this inspiration and continue growing and steiging and kol tov sela Hashem. We're about to serve lunch. But I, I wanted to share a story. A young rav came to the Chafetz Chaim once and he says, I have a dilemma. And the Chafetz Chaim says, what's the problem? He says, I was just offered a shtela. Chavetz Chaim says, no. He says, you know, I'm afraid to take it. He says, I got smicha recently. He says, I'm afraid, quite honestly, I'm going to make a mistake. I'm going to mati or something that's wrong. I'm going to usher something I couldn't have. And he says, I'm just, I'm so afraid of doing that. And the Chavetz Chaim thought for a minute, and then he smiled. And he said, you know, I never understood a certain posuk in Shamos. He says, Pharaoh tells the midwives, he says, I want you to kill all the babies, all the boys. And it says, Vatyarenahamyaldos es Elohim. He says, and they Yore Shemayim. He says, you know, 
I, what, what, what does one have to do with the other? He says, they couldn't do that. He says, why don't they just quit? Right? You get, you get, you get working instructions that you can't live with? Why not just quit? So what's this thing? He says, I don't have. He says, but I get it now. He says, they stayed in the job because they knew that the next Mialdos who might come in might not have that much Yerash Shemayim. And he says, you're the one for the job. He says, if you don't take the Shtela, who knows, the next Rav who comes in might not lose sleep at night worried that he did it right or wrong. He says, you're Taka perfect for the job. So if you feel that little gnawing feeling, that's a good feeling. You'll get the answer, you'll get the, you know, sometimes I, I get a Shaila, it's, be, it's above my pay grade. It happens. I got one on maple syrup this week. No. <laughs> uh, that, yes, it says, Talmud al Yorah halacha b'fnei rabo. Rav Ostrov sends me a shayla. I said, the Metzias, I know, but we, we, we fumbled it, and we, I think we got it okay. If not, it's only the Rabbonin. And <laughs> <laughs> but as long as it's Yerash Shemaim, you're going to do it right. Sometimes couples will come to us uh, for counseling, and I'll say something, and my wife says, where'd you get that from? I say, I have no idea. But you ask for siyata deshmaya. Not just you ask for it, you demand it. You say, Hashem, you put, us, you put me in this situation. Someone came to me with a shayla. I, I have an achrayas to them. And if you ask for siyata deshmaya, I promise you, it will come. Enjoy your lunch. Ruchim Abayim, I'm sorry I wasn't here for Shabbos. I had a little bit of a family simcha, so we're away for Shabbos. Uh, but I just want to, uh, I just want to welcome everyone to Beis Tefillah, obviously. I'm sure that was done already over Shabbos. Uh, I want to wish everyone a Mazel Tov for all that they accomplished. I know that uh, a couple of my Baal and Baruch Hashem, got smicha. I think everyone here, uh, Baruch Hashem, is learning so well and, uh, and did so well. So a big Mazel Tov to all of you for all that you accomplished. Uh, but first and foremost, I just want to really welcome and thank the, the, uh, the Rabbanim, the Dayanim that are here from, uh, from Eretz Yisrael for all that they've done. You know, as, as a Rav in the community, one of the goals is to try to increase Limud Torah. You know, so we give Shiurim and we provide different learning opportunities. And to see people in your Kehila that are taking from their own time, and this has nothing to do with me because they were doing this well before me. But to see people who are taking from their own time, professionals, busy people, who have lives, who have families, who have uh, jobs, to see them taking from their own time and to, and to study Torah in a real meaningful way, to learn halacha, you know, the questions that I get, you know, I get uh, certain questions from different people in the shul. And, uh, you know, Josh and Joe who are here, I get a different, different madrega of questions from them. So, it's, uh, so to see that is really a nachas. For, uh, for a Rav, and it's, it's really a nachas for the entire community to, uh, to see what's going on and to see all that the Rabbanim here are facilitating. So again, a big Mazel Tov to you, a big Yashakoyach uh, to the Rabbanim for all that they do, and continued Hatzlacha in, uh, in Limud Torah. I think we have to start the next Limud, right? Once you get Smich on one thing, you have to start the next Kiddushin. So good, the next Limud, that's the Minna Gedesim, that we begin the next Masechta right away. We're not done learning, we just, uh, you know, we started. Hadron we're going to return to it. So uh, I give everybody a bracha that, uh, that all the limud Torah that these chashev uh, rabbanim have facilitated should be a schus for all of you and all of your families. And Amir Tzah Hashem, that should inspire your families, your communities, your friends to increase their limud Torah and to increase their shmiras HaMitzvot as a whole. So thank you again for coming. And I'm sorry I can't stay long. I have to go pick up my family. But a uh, big mazel tov and a Bracha represents a dynamism and a forward movement and it's the goal of everyone who learns halacha to turn themselves into a mahalech someone who moves forward but actually it's not a universal type thing a mahalech comes in two flavors and we look at we look in the torah and the first one we see is eshel okim hisalech noach Right? Noah walked quietly with the Lord, very pastoral, very halcyon. And immediately Rashi jumps in. There are some who darshan that lignai, there are some darshan it l'shevach. And the Kedushas Levi, who ironically finds merit in everybody, the guy greasing his axles while he's wearing tefillin, everybody, 
he excoriates Noah as an underperforming tzaddik. Hashem says, Noah, I'm going to destroy the world. Build me a boat. And Noah says, all right, how big you want it? And that's not, that's not what a tzaddik is supposed to do. You've got to know what you got, and you're supposed to use it. So then, ten generations later, we have another model of a mahalech. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says to Avram Avinu, his halech lefonai, veheye tomim. And the Kedushas Levi translates that a bit radically. What's his, his halech lefonai? No more quiet walks with the Lord. He says, get in my face. He says, Avram Avinu, I'm going to destroy Sodom. Uh, excuse me? What if there are 50 people? No, no, no. Maybe we can talk. What if there are 40? Hisalech lefonai, get in my face. Now, I've known Arthur a long time, and I tell you, he's definitely from that second category of mahalechs, and he takes it seriously. And it's personal. I, I grew up in East Meadow. I lived, I lived in the last house in East Meadow. Right across the street was North Belmore. On the other side was Wantaw. On the other side was Levittown. You know where that is, right? At North Jerusalem and Wantua Parkway. And at some point, they opened up a young Israel of North Belmore. And every Shabbos morning, we'd stroll down Little Neck, and we'd go to the young Israel. I was bar mitzvah there. And I know what it's like with the Christmas lights. And it, it, it makes it more personal. But we wanted to recognize Arthur, who now, by the way, goes by the name Usher Kalanimus. It's a beautiful, mellifluous, medieval name, but there's a special meaning to it. You know, it says in the Gemara, you learn something a hundred times, that's impressive. But it says, Ein Doma, but there's no comparison between somebody who learns something a hundred times and a hundred and one times. And Aleph Kuf in Gematria is a hundred and one. So Arthur, your very name spells your destiny, that you're not just happy doing it a hundred times, you're going to do it 101, and you're going to do it again, and you're going to do it again. So the fact that you chose... The fact that you chose Usher Kalanimus to, to, to be known by and to have people call you that is, is more significant than you're aware of. But we've got an award for you. And we don't, we don't give this to anybody. We don't give this to everybody. It's called the V'chai Bahem. You know, today everybody's big on lifestyle. There's the vegetarian lifestyle. There's the California lifestyle. But I got news for you. There's nothing called the Torah lifestyle. Shakespeare says, my love is like a rose. A lifestyle is like something. We live a Torah life. It says, ki heim chayinu. It's not like our lifestyle. It is our life. And what happens is we like Arthur, we like Usher Kalanimus because of a special kind of contribution he makes. We come to him for his counsel and his guidance. He's been around the block a few times. And we reach out to him, and he's a mahalech. He gets in our face, but you know something? We see that it comes from a Torah true perspective. You meet a lot of people, they've been through Shas a dozen times, but sadly, Shas has not been through them even once. And Arthur represents somebody. He's been through it, but it's been through him, and that's the thing, the chai bohem. It's not just you live by it, but it gives you life. Ki chayinu. It's our life. It's, it's, it's our life blood. And that's what we want to recognize you for at this time. So I want to share one thing, and I know that the people who studied a Reuven, it's Parshas Chukas. And what is Chukas? We spoke about it. It represents transformation. We said we were taking back Zos Chukas. They're not burning the Sefer Torahs anymore. We're taking it back over the internet. Gvil and Israfim, the scrolls burn. Vosios parchos, but the letters are going through cyberspace and landing in your inbox. We're taking it back. But more than that, b'chukosai teilechu. What does it mean? What does Rashi say? He's got a very cryptic Rashi. It says, shetziu ameilim b'torah. What is chok? It's miloshon chakika. It's got to be engraved. And so what's the whole thing, Amelim B'Torah? First of all, Chakika is hard. When I went to YU, we had a guy, Taki 183. He spray-painted everything. I guess he was from 183rd Street. We were up at 186th Street in Amsterdam. But he spray-painted Taki 183 over everything. 
Imagine if he had chiseled it in the buildings. He wouldn't have gotten very far. So it's Lashon Chakika. When you engrave something, it's hard work. It's the Amelos. But also, it's permanent. And also, it's transformative. The thing that you chisel remains totally transformed. Now, you, in a former life, you were a mathematician? There's a concept in Eruvin called Chokikin Lahashlim. And to speak mathematical sprach, what this is, is you're trying to figure out a Tzura Sapesach, right? But you've got an arch. So what do we do? We project an imaginary line upwards, and we pretend we've chiseled out. But that's the concept. Chokikin Lahashlim. But maybe in your case we can say that Chokikin Lahashlim, that as a result of your work, that you, you, you're on the road to a, a sense of shlemus, that the chakika, the hard work that you put in, is really what makes you shalom and it's what keeps you. And it's what gives you shalom in your life. And it should continue to do that to 120 and beyond. So it's my pleasure, we're not done, to ask the Rosh Yeshiva to present Rabbi Dr. Rosha Kalonim Shlissel with Yeshiva Siyun Halacha's V'chai Bohem Award. Ever since our opening, Of Ihun Halacha, then Rabbi Arthur, uh, Arthur now Rabbi Shakalinimus, has been a supporter emotionally, financially, and whatever he could do. And we've be- developed over the last four years a very close relationship. As with Dovid does, I also try to go out to North Belmore every time I'm here to visit. And every time I go, I am more impressed with Rabbi Shukalei and what he's doing. He tells me that learning by him is like going into a bakery and, and tasting each, each new donut, each new custard donut, each new Danish. Each new limud by him is another kishmak, another wonderful tasting thing. And he's gone from one limud to the next, from all the different programs we have, but then he gets brachas brachas, and he tells me, I'm, he, I, I ask him, how's it going? How's brachas brachas going? He says, I'm off the derech. So I said, what do you mean you're off the derech? He said, listen, you started with Natil Siadayim, part of our brachas program. How can I learn Natil Siadayim? I want to know what the background is. So I went to Masech Siadayim in Tyrus. From Masech Siadayim, I figured it's closely connected. I went to Masech Machshirin. To Machshir, and I went to other Masechtas. I'm off the derech. I'm learning Tyrus. Rabbi Yisai, halavai, we should all be off the derech. <laughs> so it's, it's really amazing. I, I'm, I get more impressed every time I go there. How you can go one full limit to the next limit nonstop, steiging. At, at this age, who, who, everyone's down in Florida, just sitting relaxing, doing nothing. What did I, what, 85, what, is, what did I, he, he, he's been giving me advice since the beginning. I said, I got so much advice for you. Can I invite you to the board of directors? So he said, yes. And recently I asked him to be chairman of the board of directors. I also, he also said, yes. Who in his right mind at 85 years old starts a new project and joins the new board of directors of Yeshiva? You're, you're, you know, that's it. You know, let me just relax and do what I want. He's there, we're in contact almost weekly, helping me with, uh, with every little detail, reaching out to shoals. He's got, sent me now, I can't keep up with him. He sent me a, 40, a list of 49 shoals. This is the rabbi, we've got to reach out to rabbis, we've got to reach out to shoals, we've got to make you know, a known throughout the world. I, I, I'm half his age, I can't keep up. <laughs> every little detail, spreadsheets, I'm saying, on top of every, every little detail. Spreadsheets, let's work it out. How can we arrange the students? How can we make, make it better? How can we make every little detail of the yeshiva better? So it's really a tremendous cause for me and to present a sh- sh- small token of our appreciation to show a course at Toiv, as I mentioned in the beginning, to Rabbi Rab- 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 That's another thing. Who changes your name at 85? That's something we do it in our 20s and 30s. You know, we want a, a, new, a new identity. 
he was usher till 85, now he's a Bosha Klein, usher till 85, now he's a Bosha Kleinimus. It's, this is, shows, every time I go, it shows you how a person who, even at that age, is constantly steiging, constantly trying to become closer to Hashem Baruch Every bracha, every, every, I'm not much impressed every time I go, how it's, uh, there's no end. Ad Seif Yom of Zat Hashem should be gesund, and, and gesund and uh, healthy. For many, I'd may have asked Shana, and should Zechah get much more advice and, and help. And with that, I present to you the Lechai Bam Award. I don't have a long speech. I have just a few words to say. My father told me never compete with good food. You have good food, I'm going to be short. Uh, I was also to uh, taught by my father the uh, Hakar Satov. And Hakar Satov in public is very important. And I want to thank certain people that were very helpful on my long voyage, which I hope isn't ended yet. Uh, first, I want to sa thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu for giving me the years, the strength, the ability to master certain areas of the Shulchan Aruch. It is not for me to correct the Rosh Hashiva, but years are a gift from God. And God was very kind. Uh, I will be 87 in two weeks. So I, I, uh, I was first introduced to this path that I was on, that I have been on for a number of years by the wonderful shiurim written by Rav Khanan and <coughs> Rav Shenkalovsky, Isa Veheta. Then Rabbi Bloch in Lakewood wrote a wonderful set of shiurim dealing with Nida. Some of you have already taken it. It's, a, it's, it's an eye opener. After that, I had the privilege of learning some of the, uh, all the topics in Chosh Mishpat uh, written by Diane Lushinsky. Uh, it was an eye-opener. It was my first introduction to Chosh and Mishpat. I really enjoyed it. It was different. And together with that, I had Gitten, Kedushin, and Avelos, also yours. <laughs> I'm putting a medal on me. <laughs> I'm very proud of myself sometimes. There were other things that happened in between. Um, there was a young man, Rabbi Sirota, Sirota, who wrote uh, a set of notes from on Mikvos, also very interesting. And uh, then I uh, was introduced to Rabbi Ostrov, who he and I sort of clashed in the beginning. He thought I was a, some old Jew. I would use the word cantankerous old Jew, and he objected to it. And he introduced me to the magic world of Erevin. Walls come in, walls go out. Some of you who have learned Erevin would understand what I'm talking about. What is that called? Well, that was Erevin. And, uh, I did a couple of other things, and then I was exposed by the, through the urging of Rabbi Astrov to start Shabbos. Shabbos is a large uh, undertaking. It was it, 26 months, Jay? 26, it's, a, it's a, an investment. And uh, where I am now, it's, it's, a, it's a gamble. But the gamble paid off, and uh, I'll tell you an experience. I, I started uh, Shabbos several times. The beginning of Shabbos deals with Bishul and Hatmana. I couldn't connect with that. I don't cook, 
I leave cooking to somebody else. <laughs> but one night I was sitting there and I, had, I was tired of what I was doing. And I pulled out the notes from Shabbos and it was the, one of the last topics. The last topic deals with refuah on Shabbos. And I thought the argument there was, what do we do with Shabbos and what do we do with the Sukkotas and the Fashas? And one rabbi said that we let, we, we, we push away Shabbos and heal that person so that he can observe more Shabbosim. And it struck me that there are a number of Jews, my brothers, my sisters, my parents, my children, my cousins, my aunts and uncles, were murdered and disappeared. And they couldn't observe Shabbos. And I thought I would do Shabbos for them. And it was a wonderful experience. I owe this to you. Uh, I thank you. I thank all the people that have written the Shiurim. And I'm, of course, very grateful to the Anhala to honor me, and I'm very humbled. But since I'm now in the thanking mode, I want to thank my grandchildren, Ariel, who came to celebrate with me, Jonathan, my grandson, and Eleanor, who today is celebrating her 11th birthday. Wow. And Mazel Tov, and my son, Daniel Menachem Eliezer, who, in a moment when I was in very bad shape, he and a friend of his, Dr. Al Aaron Berger, came to me, and if not for their help, I would not be here. So I publicly thank you for doing what you did. I thank you. I also want to thank Aaron Dove, the grandson of my wife, and Avi, the grandson, also the grandson, and Sri Hirsch. So I thank everybody, but well, one person I didn't thank yet, which is probably the most important person to thank. That's my wife, <laughs> Miriam. Who, who has given me peace, space, and even encouragement to do what I wanted to do. For me, I don't know how, what it is for you, but learning for me was really a, a, a joy ride. I had fun, fun. And I'm sorry to say, maybe one shouldn't say that in this audience. One should be very so somber and say, very important. But for me, it was a blast. <laughs> it was really a blast. I remember learning Melicha. Some of you know Melicha, especially the women. How can that be a joy? How can that give you pleasure? Melicha. <laughs> what can I do? I am what I am. If you want to blame someone, there's my father and my mother. Thank you very much for the honor. Thank you very much for listening to me. Yeah. Goodbye.